My Training Plan. 30 CFR Part 46 requires operators to have an approved training plan under which miners are provided training. Independent contractors who employ miners are primarily responsible for providing comprehensive training to their employees to comply with Part 46 requirements. With the permission of the mine operator, contractors can follow their training plan to meet the Part 46 requirements. Part 46 training plans are considered approved if they contain, at a minimum, the name of the production operator or independent contractor, mine name and MSHA mine identification number, or independent contractor identification number. The name and position of the person designated by you who is responsible for the health and safety training at the mine. This person may be the production operator or independent contractor. A general description of the teaching methods and the course materials that are to be used in the training program, including the subject areas to be covered and the approximate time or range of time to be spent on each subject area. A list of the persons and or, or organizations who will provide the training and the subject areas in which each person and or organization is competent to instruct. The evaluation procedures used to determine the effectiveness of training. This evaluation may include a written exam, on-the-job demonstration and observation, discussion or oral responses to questions about the training. I already have a training plan that meets OSHA requirements. How does it compare to MSHA requirements? In many states, OSHA duties are assumed by a state agency. MSHA has two mandatory inspections per year for surface operations and four mandatory inspections per year for underground operations. OSHA has no mandatory inspections. All citations issued under MSHA have mandatory penalties. OSHA has none. Under MSHA, the inspectors can close the mine for serious conditions, whereas OSHA must seek a court order for similar conditions. MSHA can assess individual civil penalties for officers and agents of the company. OSHA does not. MSHA can also impose criminal sanctions for accidents not involving fatalities. For OSHA, these criminal sanctions are for fatality-related incidents only. Accident, injury, and illness reports are required by MSHA as they occur. Injury and illness reports under OSHA are maintained in a log. MSHA requires mandatory training. OSHA only requires training on specific standards. Miners' representatives are entitled to pay while accompanying an inspector. Miners may bring discrimination cases for safety-related conditions. Under OSHA, there is no right of action for safety discrimination. 